I tell you what, there's plenty to digest coming out of last night's game. Plenty of uh, good scores. There's a bunch of, of lower ones and unfortunately a, a tough injury for us there. And let's pay our respects to Ewan Aiken now. Really enjoyed uh, having him in my squad this year. He's had an absolutely cracking season and unfortunately for him, ended up with a torn peck in last night's game and, and not a great score. Obviously, ended up with an error out, uh, from that one as well and a penalty early for a leg pull. So, yeah, not great on uh, on, on this, this game's front. And for those that did captain him, it's tough. And for those that vice-captained him, hopefully your captain plays because that five is, is rough going. And it just means another trade for us as well. And the only good thing about this is the fact that he's a very high-priced player. So we can use him almost as a straight swap to get to... Obviously, he's going to lose some cash here, but almost a straight swap to guys like Isaiah Yo or you know, Colin Matungi, who continues to absolutely brain it at the moment. So, yeah, this was a... A reality check last night, a deflating first half for for most of us, obviously with Aiken going down. And if you're not a Kolomatungi owner, like uh, like myself, then 51 at halftime in 40 minutes, just he just continues to do it. He did end up having you know four and negatives there, but uh, yeah, not enough to, to slow him down. 183 meters, 40 tackles there with three tackle breaks and one try saver, which they took away one. Um, not sure if that's yeah correct or not or whatever, but uh, definitely had one there in that um, that earlier try with with Maxi Plath, which oh just needed needed that one as well. So yeah, Keon fifty one and then end up at sixty five is a massive relief because at halftime it wasn't looking good. I had Trey Fuller personally on fourteen. I had Plath on twenty. I had Cook on nineteen. Gray was doing pretty well on twenty eight with these couple of try savers, but um. You know, then Aiken with the long-term injury on five. So to see Colin Matungi on 51 and half time with a lot of people captained him, I was like, oh, this is rough. But it did get a little bit better in that second half for sure. But yeah, very deflating when you do come into these weeks. And it's happened a bit to me uh, when I've had a, yeah, an annoying injury or something like that. It's in like an earlier game in the, in the week as well. So it just deflates the rest of your weekend a little bit uh, in terms of NRL fantasy, obviously there. So yeah. A great score from Keon. Thankfully, it did drop down a little bit, but he continues to do great things. And the big question mark now is that Jai Arrow is going in for surgery, most likely. We'll see if he gets named on it next week. But if he is to be out, Cheekam had a cracking game there. I wonder what will happen. Does does Colin Matungi actually go to that edge and stick there? Does Murray start on that edge? And they played what they did a couple of weeks ago, but they did have Arrow there uh, as well in that one. So... Interesting how that one's going to play out. But let's speak about Arrow as well. The last four weeks, he's gone 50 plus. And has been an absolutely incredible servant this year to the Bunnies. And I'm sure their fans will be very, very pleased with the effort that he's been able to go through. Apparently, this is you know the injury that happened in game one of the season in, in Vegas. And he's really stuck through it. After having some time off, coming back and four 50 pluses in a row, he went a 30 odd. And the two games before that were 50 plus as well. So for those that have jumped on, I'm sure you're very, very impressed with with what he's able to deliver. A couple of eight tackle break plus games in a row. So really, really good stuff there. Alex Johnson, shout out to Mark. He gets the uh, gets the spoils eventually after a couple of 20s there and a really important week there to get a 66. And and even had uh, yeah, one of his tries taken away from a really good Avarillo try saver tackle as well so yeah could have been even bigger and yeah 66 anyone who's jumped on him at 321k uh, you're very very happy with that if you jumped on this week you, you're absolutely flying but good stuff there Farnworth with a 64 he yeah was very very impressive obviously points wise after going back to back 30 odds if you bought him a few weeks ago when he was at 700k and flying you uh really needed this uh this score that's for sure Bostock as well. We cannot get any tries down the right-hand side with Jermaine Asako at the moment, but Bostock, some of the, there's some games there where he absolutely dominates and gets plenty of good footy, and he actually played great as well, You know, getting a line break off a, a kick return there, off a bomb kick there, and 270 run meters there, a couple of offloads, three line breaks, try assist, and the try as well. So thank you for that one. Back on the inside for Mr. Trey Fuller. Arrow, we spoke about Tevita Pango Jr. Very awkward price if you did want to go on him at 461. The 58 there in 52 minutes. He just bulldozed all those players there in her, in that in that play there with the switch of play from Max Plath. So many P's in that sentence. Uh, so yeah, hopefully for him and, and uh, the Dolphins' sake, he can continue to play pretty well like this. He had no errors, no penalties, just three missed tackles, 
made 14 in 52 minutes, which is hilarious how that one plays out. But uh, yeah, good stuff for him. Jackie White and 55, the gift that keeps on giving for owners of him. It's a frustrating one for myself, not jumping on a few weeks ago. He's really taken over the kick meters, I suppose, is the big thing now with, with Luttrell out. He... 548 kick meters, walk 190. So plenty of kick meters spread between them. You know, in other weeks, it might be like 350 or 400 to 150 or 120 or something like that. And that's still a lot. That's still somewhere around that 15, I reckon, on a general basis when he's getting 450 kick meters. So yeah, very interesting play. He's getting over 100 run meters again. He had the one try assist, three line break assist there as well to go along with his tackle numbers. So great stuff for white owners. I'm a little bit jealous and I'll have to potentially look at him, I reckon, with Aiken going down just to have some cover in that center spot because right now for next week, I do have enough. Like I've got I've got Garrick and I've got um, Karaz that can, that can deputize in center for me. But if Whiten's going to continue to play this role at 520K or whatever he's going to end up with after this, he uh, is still got a little bit of value probably. And it did build up in the last sort of you know section of this game. It was kind of tracking along 30 and 50 odd and and boosted that there. And just a, a little thought on try assists. So I can complain on this one, but I'm also complaining for a player that I don't have. So Whiten's tip on to AJ where he had to obviously beat a couple of players to score. AJ doesn't have that opportunity to score if Whiten doesn't have that tip on. If Whiten catches that ball, he gets crunched, right? But he tips it on and gives Johnson a chance to beat two players and score. So I think that has to be a try assist, in my opinion. I don't own him. I just think that one's a try assist, right? And then you look at the plus situation. There's been, you know, the ins- the the change of direction play, the cross play there for Tavita Pangai, who did go over, you know, who who ended up running straight over Jai Gray, and then Cook couldn't finish him off either, and and save that try. That has happened multiple times. There was that one that Hines got where he did that cross play, but he did like 15, 20 meters out and Hazleton ran through a massive gap. And that definitely was, that should have been a try assist. But why isn't this one a try assist? He ended up deceiving the defense, right? And then he gave the inside ball. If you look from the actual, the other side view, so the other behind view on the left-hand side there, you can see there that, yeah, the defense is going the way that Plas going. And then he drops it back behind him, which he can't see the pass because they're directly behind. And if you're def- if you're defensively in front of Plath, you don't see that pass because he's turned that way and, and goes behind him that way. And then he ends up picking out Jai Gray, who, is, who shouldn't have been the guy that was up in that line. It's only because of the deception that he's up there. So I'm not sure why that isn't a try assist either. They absolutely do hate the one where... That one for Harry Grant to wish out that day. We're going back to the wish the, the Harry Grant one. Uh, he passed it to Wishart, just short of the line, short ball, you know, two meters from the line. He just goes directly over the defender and scores, right? They didn't give it a try assist. In this one here, he runs directly at Gray and it's, a no, it's a, not a try assist either. So by that logic and what we're seeing at the moment, Johnson kind of ran straight at the, the winger as well. So they're not liking that. Whereas if he ran to the left or right of, of Gray and dragged him over the line, in my opinion, I think they'd be giving that as a try assist. Just the way that it's playing out. If you watch a lot of them and what they give and what they don't give, that seems to be what's coming up. So just to yeah, have some explanation. It's not going to matter in the... It doesn't matter in the grand scheme because they don't change them. It's their interpretation. And that's the, the big thing with a lot of NRL, NRL rules in general is that it's up to interpretation um, as to why there's so much gray area as well. And then the hard thing here is that you've got fantasy giving a try assist for one thing, super coach, dream team, all these other games there giving the assist for another thing. Super coach has it a bit different as well. That last pass, that little tip on a lot of the time isn't the try assist. It's usually whoever creates it. So maybe the second to last pass, the fullback or the halfback that gets it to the center who taps it on usually gets that assist. So that one's again, it's up to interpretation. So it's very, very hard. Sometimes we get it right or we get some luck on try savers, turnover tackles, assists, line break assists, offloads, whatever it is, right? Uh, and sometimes we don't. And that was one where I had some unluckiness for my player and obviously you almost scored that try as well, Plathy. Unfortunate score for him. But then you've got White on the other hand who I don't have who I think probably deserves that try assist as well and hasn't got it. So swings and roundabouts, right? 
yeah, to sort of uh, uh, explain that, I think it helps to explain these things a little bit, just to give you guys a little bit more, a little bit more knowledge and a little bit more as to a reason why some of this comes up. So I'm not sure if that helps or not. Let me know if it does. Um, I'm, I'm kind of sick of complaining. <laughs> it's, uh, it doesn't get us anywhere, does it? Walker, 53, he had two try assists. <laughs> Kicking off the tee wasn't too great. Him and Tane Milne, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, he did a little bit across the board there. Damien Cook with 51 for him. It started pretty poor, as I said, 19 at half time. He was out to center for 15 minutes as well. And then... Yeah, ended up getting through that full 80 there. 45 tackles, three misses, two tackle breaks, 46 run meters. So the run meters has absolutely fallen off a cliff the last two weeks as soon as I've bought him. But as to one of, what one of the boys said to me in the private group chat, Jamie, you caught a 50 in hooker. I did. So we'll take the 51, that's for sure. And yeah, he's an interesting one going forward. I think you do pick up Reed Marnie going forward after this week. Cheekam, 51. So he becomes a very interesting edge option that also covers center, which is pretty wild in that one as well. But 388K, he did great. He's obviously someone that uh, you know, I mentioned very briefly. He wasn't someone that was like a clear target this week. I think he was easy you know, with the lower minutes and the lower points to, to wait a week and see how he goes. And this is a lot of what he has shown us in in his time out in the park in general when he gets close to 80 minutes in you know, in, the, in that edge position. And, and it's his now for the season with, with Arrow. If he isn't named next week, then... And he's actually into surgery. Cheekam becomes a very interesting 400K option, that's for sure, at edge and center. They can cover Aiken as well. Jai Gray, 50. So very happy with his couple of try savers. That one, one on one there was uh, was very, very impressive on Bostock. It was a great try save. Uh, picked up that try with the um, penalty try. So again, I did get some luck at the start of that game. And then very, very unlucky a few minutes later with Aiken. And then, yeah, some bad scores at halftime. But we could have lost Fuller if the you know if he ended up dropping it and there were some players around or something like that and they didn't give it a penalty try, we would have uh, would have lost Gray. And the reason why they end up giving that a penalty try team is just because he would have had a clearer run to the ball and it wouldn't have been as frantic trying to like you know twist and move around. It happened uh, earlier on in the season with um, with that of Zach Laybutt as well. So yeah, but yeah, happy days with that one and a good try assist off the scrum play as well. Would hope for a few more meters and hopefully that can happen next time. But yeah, very happy with the score and he didn't get injured, which is good news. Gagai with 49, three tries in this one. So good stuff from him. If anyone holding on, good work. Fuller, 48. So still very happy with this effort. How he got 270 meters for one tackle break though is tough going and we'll see what happens after Origin and if he gets a game next week. But if he doesn't, thank you. Trey Fuller, an incredible servant to my side there. Basically got, I think I got close to a 50, that 52 average with him in my side uh, across a bunch of games and some good, 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 good gains in price as well. So that's lovely. Thank you, Fuller. Duncan, 43 for him in this one, 53 minutes. I expect him to get some decent minutes going forward with you know, whoever ends up on that edge, right? And he'll take some more of the middle minutes, but not someone you want to target. Asako with a 41, you'll take that in this game with no tries or line breaks with six goals, one try saver. Still frustrating that they aren't going down that side. I've got him in super coach, so I understand the pain of you guys that do own him. Tane Mill, one of the cheaper guys you could have grabbed this week as well with a 39. Isaiah Katoa, 36. We're expect expecting this from him at the moment. Plathy, after 55 tackles last week into a 38 tackle effort, a penalty, two missed tackles, 19 run meters with one tackle break. Could have had a try assist, could have had a try. So there's a few things going on there, which is which is helpful that just didn't happen this week and could hopefully happen from here on. But if you, uh, I think if you are looking to buy, I think you hold off because he misses out on those run meters. And unless he starts to develop that part of his game, in the next six days or something. Um, we just were going to be relying on tackles and, and the odd tries just or something like that. So not ideal. Jesse Bromwich in his 200th, I believe. Congrats to him. 50 minutes for 30 points. David Wiley, 30 points. Avrilo Lemuelu, 25. He's had a real drop, hasn't he, unfortunately? So not someone I think we should be targeting anymore. It's He's, yeah, he's just not scoring as well. And the attacking stats aren't there with uh, to go along with that base for sure. Kenna 25, Mamazelas 13 in 21. And uh, yeah, Sean O'Sullivan came on and had that eager energy to get in front of uh, Fuller for that for that try as well. Uh, but that's okay. We got a little bit of luck on the second one where Fuller actually got the try where he could have gone left to Herbie and that would have been a sad moment in my uh, 
in my 2024 season. But that's our first game, guys. We do only have one game this evening as well. Sharkies and the Tigers. There are the there is the odd rumor flying around that Brimson may be moved to six and Campbell to fourteen. I just read between the lines uh, as well on on Guru's post, and he seems to be on the money with the sources that he that he has. It seems to be that you know a pod play he was mentioning in Supercoach, which would be Campbell, uh, may be getting moved to the bench because there's no other no one else that'd be getting moved to the bench in this scenario. But um. Yeah, just keep an eye on that one. Hopefully, we find out at 5.30 this evening for the 24-hour update. But, yeah, do what you can to just kind of keep yourself in the loop with that Jaden Campbell one there if that uh, if that does eventuate. But thanks so much for being here, guys. You're all absolute legends. I, wish you, I hope you have a cracking Friday, and we'll catch you very, very soon.